When you think of the Los Angeles Clippers, it would make sense for your brain to go to Blake Griffin and the teams that he was on as they went to multiple Western Conference playoffs and while they were never able to capture a championship, some good years with Blake Griffin in uniform as a Los Angeles Clipper. But we're going to go to another great Clipper who actually started off on the Chicago Bulls, and that would be Elton Brand, drafted by Chicago with the number one overall pick in 1999, Brand, a 6'8", 275-pound powerhouse, who was a force attacking the rim, showing athleticism to beat some bigs off the dribble, but also the strength to get through a lot of guys in the low post as well. It seemed like Chicago had found their star of the future, and this was just after the departures of Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Phil Jackson, and that entire dynasty. Brand would win co-rookie of the year with Steve Francis in the 2000 season, but then Chicago decided to go in a different direction, drafting Eddie Curry and then trading Elton Brand for Tyson Chandler's draft rights after Brand put up a 20-10 season in 2001, and suddenly he would find himself on the Los Angeles Clippers where he would continue to do his dirty work. He averaged around two blocks a game for the majority of his career, and in his time with the Clippers, he would have about a six-year stretch where you could have made the argument he was one of the potentially 10 to 15 best players in the NBA, showing those low post abilities that I mentioned before, the physical nature, the finishing around the basket. Brand was really a handful to deal with, but he also had some other abilities as well. There was more grace to his game than simply just dunking on people's heads. He was very good from floater range, and his mid-range jumper was consistently over 40% in the NBA. So he was really a complete offensive player, as Brand would average about 20 points and 10 rebounds for his six seasons with the Clippers. But even with his individual success, the team was never able to put together a winning record until the 2006 season, where Sam Cassell, Catino Mobley, and Chris Kamen, among others, were able to have a, a decent enough team around Elton Brand as he just had a monster 2006 season. And if you compare his win shares to someone like a Kevin Garnett, KG only had about three or four seasons where he had more win shares than Elton Brand in this season. It would rank among some of Dirk's best seasons. And the same thing can be said for Tim Duncan. So at Elton Brand's absolute peak, he was quietly one of the best players in the NBA, and it all came out in the second round series against the seven seconds or less Phoenix Suns, where Brand just did whatever he wanted to do against this Phoenix team. And the Clippers pushed these Suns all the way to seven games, and Brand had himself an all-around performance. For the series, he averaged over four assists a game. So while Phoenix was desperate to find an answer for him in the low post, if you left anybody open, he was going to find him, making himself nearly unguardable in this series. And we'll get to his scoring in a moment to just show you the magnitude of his performance here. But whenever Phoenix decided to bring a double, it was not going to work, as Brand was just putting on a passing display for a big man who did not handle the ball that much. If we talk about his defense in this series, he averaged over three block shots a game. I would actually love to see Elton Brand in today's NBA, because with his size at 6'8", he could have defended a few positions and it would have been great to see him in today's league, but in the mid-2000s he was still an intimidating shot blocker nonetheless, as a lot of the time if Phoenix wanted to attack the rim and he was in there, they were going to have some problems. So the playmaking was there, the defense was there for Elton Brand. As for his scoring, he averaged 31 points a game in this second round against Phoenix. 31 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 block shots, while playing 45 minutes a game? Are you kidding me? Is Elton Brand the most underrated star player of the 2000s in the NBA? Now they would still go on to lose the series in 7 games, but impressive nonetheless. And the Clippers were not able to have another playoff appearance with Brand, although his individual numbers were still there. And then after the 2008 season, he garnered the attention from one of the best point guards in the NBA at that time in Baron Davis, 
whose plan was to sign with the Clippers and have Elton Brand re-sign there as well so they could team up and form a duo that could really be something in the Western Conference. One of the best point guards in the league, seeing Elton Brand and going, I want to play with that guy. Now, what ended up happening was Brand got a very generous offer from the Philadelphia 76ers, and he decided to go there. And then unfortunately, in the 2008 season, before he even went to Philadelphia, he suffered a significant injury, and those injuries hampered his abilities for pretty much the rest of his career, as there were some seasons where he wasn't able to play as much, and he aged into the uh, the older veteran on younger teams, but he was still able to make a decent enough impact. He would have a stay with the Dallas Mavericks, as well as the Atlanta Hawks as well, before retiring in the 2016 season. It would have been great to see Elton Brand with Baron Davis, both of them healthy, because he never really played with a second star. And looking at those numbers he had against Phoenix, obviously Phoenix being more of an offensive team, but incredible nonetheless, it would have been something to see him with another top-tier player, because he carried the Clippers for quite a long time, and while it was nice to see him kind of have his moments later on in his career on some better teams, it would have been great to see Brand with another big-time NBA player.